Yeah, okay, well, you can keep copying while I talk. I'll just, I'm just gonna spend about 15 minutes giving you an overview of Congress and the hands-on lab. Uh, so my name's Tim Henricks. I didn't do all the work for this, though. Alex Yip is actually the guy who did all the preparation for it. So, but he could make it, so, I, so I'm here talking. I am the PTL of Congress. Um, there are another, uh, a couple of people from Congress here, so if you have questions, uh, they are good people to talk to. Raise your hand if you're on Congress. Okay, so you have some hint. Okay, good. All right, we'll do this again at the end. Okay. Um, before I get into actually what Congress does, I want to explain a little bit about why it exists. Okay, and the reason why Congress exists is that um, when you're talking about an OpenStack cloud, there are really a whole bunch of different kinds of people who have ideas about how they want that OpenStack cloud to behave, right? And on this slide, we've got, you know, business operators, right? We've got audit and compliance people, security people, legal people, administrators. You've got application developers as well. And everybody has a different idea about what they want that OpenStack cloud to do. Nobody has a complete picture, though. And so Congress was designed to solve what we're calling the policy problem. And the policy problem is very simple. It just says, well, all of these different stakeholders, different users, contributors to the cloud have different ideas about how that cloud is supposed to behave. And so what we are trying to do is solve the problem of how do we get those ideas out of their head and convey them to OpenStack in a way that OpenStack now knows what it is supposed to be doing uh, so that it can o obey, those, obey, their, obey its users the right way. Okay, so let me give you an example. So here's an example that you'll see in the hands-on lab. Uh, and this is a very simple example. You'll notice that this is just a constraint. It's not a, it's not a complete description of how the cloud is supposed to behave. It's just a slice. It's a constraint. It's an idea about what is supposed to happen. There could be lots of things that are supposed to happen, but this is just one of them. One of them is that um, we want it to be the case that there's never a virtual machine that's connected to the internet that has port 80 open. All right, and, and conceptually what this means is maybe this is a security person stating this. What they're saying is uh, we only want to allow HTTPS traffic. We want to only allow secure traffic, okay? So this is one thing that maybe the operator, the administrator of the cloud wants to impose on all the applications that are running on, on the OpenStack cloud, on all the virtual machines. All right, and what you'll notice about this particular policy is that it relies on a couple of different services. It relies on information from Nova, about which virtual machines are connected to which ports, and it relies on information from Neutron that says which ports are connected to the internet. All right, and so what you'll notice fundamentally about this kind of policy, about this kind of behavior, is that it fundamentally requires information from multiple services. This kind of idea, this constraint about how the cloud is supposed to behave, is something that we can't simply give to Nova or to Neutron. We can't give it to any one of the existing services in OpenStack because they don't know about what's going on in the other service. Nova doesn't necessarily know everything that's going on. Neutron, Neutron doesn't necessarily know everything that's going on in Nova. All right, so what Congress does is it's a system that's designed to solve this policy problem. And in particular, what it does is, is it, 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 it's, its fundamental input is, is a policy. A policy describes how the cloud, how the OpenStack cloud ought to behave, what things are permitted and what things are not. All right, you saw an example on the last slide. The other input that it actually gets is um, all of the services that are running in OpenStack that it's supposed to be able to use in order to, to enforce or monitor or audit that policy. Okay, so the idea here is that the, the existing services, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Swift, and the like, represent the actual state of the data center for Congress. The policy represents the desired state of the data, data center. And so Congress is sort of a standard policy system. It's got those, it differentiates desired from actual state. And once it has those two inputs, it's gonna do a number of things with it, right? It knows desired state and it knows actual state. So the most obvious thing that it can do is it can say, well, let's look for mismatches between the desired state and the actual state. And we call this monitoring, right? We're just, we know what's supposed to happen, we know what's actually happening, so let's find um, mismatches. The more interesting thing, of course, what everybody wants is enforcement, right? Everybody wants Congress to actually affect how the data center is behaving so that the actual state and the, and the desired state coincide. And here there are a couple of different 
ways that Congress tries to, to enforce policy. The first we're calling proactive. And here the idea is that Congress is trying to prevent violations before they occur. And in particular, think of this sort of like Keystone today, right? So Keystone, Keystone policy, I should say, um, stops API calls from being executed that the Keystone policy says shouldn't be executed. So in this proactive form of enforcement, you could imagine Congress doing the same kind of thing, which is that before, let's say, Nova spins up a new virtual machine, it could ask Congress and say, should I do this or should I not? And Congress has a rich policy language that could potentially answer that question. The second kind of enforcement that Congress does is reactive. And here the idea is that Congress is going to try to correct violations after they've already occurred. Right? You can imagine Congress sitting there and monitoring. It, it has the actual state. It has the desired state. It finds a mismatch. And now maybe Congress can actually take some action to correct, to eliminate that violation, to eliminate that mismatch between desired and actual state. Another kind of enforcement is delegation. And here the idea is pretty simple. Conceptually, at least, this is the one that's far, by far the least well developed. But here the idea is that there are a number of policy engines running around in the data center. Right? We know that there are some within OpenStack. Right? GBP uh, is a networking policy system. Swift has some policy capabilities for storage. And so the idea behind delegation is, well, if Congress has this overarching policy that may mention uh, both uh, may, may mention a bunch of services, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, Swift, what we could imagine it doing is looking at that policy, grabbing the this, this Swift relevant portion and handing it to Swift, grabbing the networking relevant portion and handing it to GBP. All right, so the idea behind delegation is that we want to take this one policy that Congress has been given that describes all of the behavior that's permitted in the data center and hand off the problem of enforcement to other special purpose policy engines that already exist. All right, so that's the concept behind delegation. Uh, unlike the rest of them, which you'll, which you'll uh, see today, uh, delegation is one that we're still working on, we're still prototyping, so you won't get experience with it. But uh, it's super exciting. We're all, we're all, we all think it's a future. So uh, we'll, you'll hear more about that in future summits. Uh, the last capability here that we have on the list is audit. And here the idea is pretty simple. Like, if you've got desired and actual state, it would be nice to have a record of all the policy violations that have occurred, maybe what was their cause, what did people do to, to, to eliminate them or to say, no, those are actually okay, we'll leave those be. Audit is, a, is another uh, piece of functionality that we don't have yet. Okay, so um, one slide on architecture, just because you will need to, to, to know this. Um, as you do the lab. And it's a very simple architecture, so it's, it's not conceptually difficult. But this sort of gets to the point of how does Congress interact with all of the other services in OpenStack? How does Congress talk to Nova and Neutron and Cinder in, actu in order to actually get their actual state? And conceptually, it's very simple. There is a policy engine that runs within Congress, and that policy engine talks to a a bunch of other drivers, one driver for each of the services that are connected. So there's a Neutron driver, a Nova driver, a Cinder driver, a Swift driver, a driver for every service you want to hook up to Congress. And all of those drivers connect with the policy engine and talk to the policy engine. They exchange data and policy and everything else in the world over a message bus. All right? And so what you can imagine happening here is that periodically, let's say the Nova driver, uh, makes a bunch of API calls to Nova and actually says, give me the list of servers, give me the list of, uh, tell me for each server how, how much memory it has, how much disk space, and so on. And then it takes that data, the result of those API calls, pumps it across the message bus and hands it to the policy engine, who then does its thing, whatever its thing happens to be, monitoring, enforcement, or audit. One other slide that I'll go through here, which is just a quick example of how you write policy, right? Hopefully at this point it's sort of conceptually clear what you're going to, how you would hook up a new data source, right? How you would hook up a new data source. So here we're going to see how you actually write a policy and give it to Congress. And this is the policy that, that uh, this is a piece of the policy that we talked about earlier, okay? So in English, the policy says that um, every Nova server that's connected to the internet must have a security group. If it doesn't have a security group, then there's an error because then necessarily port 80 is open. Okay? All right, and the way that we write this policy in data log is that we kind of think of it as defining a function in, let's say, Python or something. Okay? And the way this is going to work is we're going to conceptually be writing a function that describes all of the conditions under which there is an error in the current state of the data center. 
okay? There's an error in the current state of the data center, okay? And so if you see on this slide, what we're looking at here is, is, is we're starting the definition of error, and here in particular what we're going to say is that the function error is going to be true of a particular VM ID, a user ID, and an email exactly when Well, first we go and ask Nova, is this VM ID and user ID a, a legitimate server? All right, and then we, we ask this sort of question, which is, is this VM ID connected to the internet on some port, which we're calling port ID here, all right? And then if that particular port ID doesn't have a security group, then there's an error. And finally, we'll go and ask Keystone for the email address of this particular user uh, to sort of fill in the, the, the last bit of information there. Are you actually using Borat for this? Yes. Good question. So maybe I should have started with data log is a variant of prologue, SQL, first order logic. They're all very similar, all in the same vein. So if you know any of those languages, you have some clues to what we're talking about here. Um, the interesting thing about this particular example is that you'll notice that some of those functions that we're calling are prefixed with the name of a service. Nova uh, and Keystone are the ones that we see here. And so obviously what's happening there is that conceptually we're making a function call and, and asking Nova, tell me the list of servers and, and, and check whether this VM ID and this user ID are, are, are one of the ones that get returned by that API call. But the other ones, the ones that don't have a prefix of a service name, um, well those are things that are going to be defined within policy itself. So think of these as helper functions in a traditional programming language. In this particular example, we've only shown uh, one of them, which is uh, has security group. And so how do you know whether a particular port ID has a security group? Well, again, we define the function as we did before, and here it turns out to just be sufficient to go and ask Neutron whether there's a security group port binding for that port. And that's sufficient, yeah. You will see that in the lab but it is a function, exactly. Yes. All right, so you get the idea, right? So when you're writing these functions, call them functions, if you will, uh, you're either going and talking to these services directly to get information, or you're using helper functions that you yourself defined within policy, all right? Okay, so uh, the only other thing that I'm gonna do is go through a quick overview of what you're gonna actually do in the hands-on lab to get a, get a more visceral feel for, for what, how to use Congress. Okay, um, and I, I think you all know that we are giving you a virtual machine that has the full dev stack installed with Congress. Um, there's some more USB keys here. Um, and then you're gonna be, you're gonna take on the role of a Congress user, okay? And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have to figure out what is the policy that I actually wanna enforce. And okay, you're gonna just, choose the one that we give you so that you can copy and paste. And, and this is the policy that I mentioned a moment ago. Uh, no virtual machine may be connected to the internet and allow ingress traffic on TCP port 80. So that's the policy that you as the user are trying to get Congress to do the right thing with, trying to get Congress to monitor and enforce it. And then the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna have to connect some data sources. You're gonna, I think it's Neutron that you have to connect or maybe it's Nova. We've connected the other ones for you that you need. So you'll see firsthand how to connect a data source you won't have to write the code for the driver, you just have to tell Congress to spin up that driver. Uh, and then you're gonna copy and paste a data log encoding of that policy and tell Congress to actually go ahead and insert it. All right, and now you've given Congress the two inputs, you've given Congress the, the data sources that it's pulling data from to get the actual state, and you've given Congress the, the desired state, a description of the desired state. Uh, and then you're gonna ask Congress, are there any policy violations? And then maybe you'll create a violation and maybe you'll eliminate that violation manually. Uh, and then you'll go ahead and pretend you're another service like Nova and ask Congress if some change that you were about to make is permitted by policy or is not. And in so doing, you'll see how proactive enforcement would work. Remember, we're, Congress is trying to prevent violations. Um, and then finally, you'll go ahead and write a, a little bit of policy that describes to Congress how to correct violations when they occur. Okay, so here we'll see reactive enforcement. All right, um, any questions about that? Here I've got a few instructions on how to get started. I think all of us know, has, has anyone not uh, gotten a chance to download the virtual machine image? 
Okay, looks like we got everybody. Okay, so, so we're off and running, which is great. Oh, we've got one. Um, and so once you've gotten those, once you've gotten VirtualBox installed and, uh, and you've got uh, the Congress hands-on lab, then the instructions, which are linked from uh, that address, will get you up and running. Okay? They're also inside the virtual box, but any questions right now? Okay, so we'll be walking around. If you have questions, just toss up a hand. <laughs> 